After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, Very truly I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, Ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it into the dish. Then, dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. So Jesus told him, What you are about to do, do quickly. But no one at the meal understand why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the festival, or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out, and it was night. When he was gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself, and will glorify him at once. Did you know that my name is only mentioned 26 times in the Gospels and yet everyone knows my name? You don't have to read the Bible to know my name. Judas. It is lodged in the collective subconscious after 2,000 years. If the only information you have about me is from the Christian scripture, you could sum it up in five facts. I was chosen by Jesus to be one of his band of 12 disciples. I was called a thief. That kiss. 30 pieces of silver. I ended up as a corpse hanging from a tree. But there is much more to me than that. And I expect that you, like all the rest, think of me as a betrayer. The betrayer the scapegoat, the Jew who sent Jesus to his death. Do you know, every time you receive Holy Communion, you hear the words, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it. Not on the night he was arrested, but on the night he was betrayed. It's really unfair that right from the beginning, I get a bad press. Take Mark. He lists me as one of the 12 disciples. But what do you notice? I'm the last on the list and I'm described as Judas, the betrayer. You have listened to what John wrote in his gospel. This is the reason I've been the scapegoat for centuries. I betrayed Jesus. Except that I didn't. I handed him over to the authorities. It is why my name has been tainted for generations, even until today. They, you, have got it all wrong. Haven't you read the end of the story? It might have been a three-act drama of plotting with the chief priests, of Jesus announcing my betrayal while we sat at the table for the Passover meal, and then identifying Jesus in the garden with a kiss. But my story doesn't end there. Don't you realise that I was so full of remorse and regress, regret and self-loathing that I handed back the 30 silver coins, blood money they call it, and then killed myself? I've got to explain, I've got to make you understand it's not what, they, what it looks like. We had all hoped so much. 
We really thought that Jesus might be the one who could set our people free, break the bondage of Rome. We could be a mighty nation again. To begin with, it was all so good. I really believed that Jesus might just be God's Messiah. He spoke with authority. He knew the scriptures. He was the first person I'd met who really hungered for the kingdom of God like I do. It seemed that he would take the religious leaders on. But then things changed. He spoke in riddles. He spoke about his own death. I remonstrated with him. What good is dying? What help is suffering? We need action. We need someone to inspire the people and lead them. But Jesus spoke about loving to the end. That looked like weakness and the religious leaders would exploit that. Every day as we turned towards Jerusalem, I felt further away from him. I couldn't understand the way he was going. It was at the Passover meal when he broke the bread. I realised I didn't recognise him anymore. Well, at that point, I left. I wasn't betraying anything. I was faithful to all we believed in. He was the one who had changed. He had been so active and now he was passive. I thought that if he was arrested, then the people who welcomed him only five days before with their shouts of Hosanna would, as a mob, stop it and proclaim Jesus as the king he declared himself to be. I wasn't doing the work of Satan. I was doing what Jesus wanted me to do. I should be honoured even more than Peter. But it didn't happen like that. It all went wrong. No one came to his rescue. It was Pilate who condemned him to death. Not me, not the Jews. And I couldn't live with myself for the part I had played in his death. I was too hasty to end my life and didn't hear Jesus's words from the cross. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. But surely no one is outside the reach of God's forgiveness if your sorrow and remorse is sincere. The world might damn me for all time, but Jesus doesn't. Let us pray. Loving and forgiving God, as we journey through these days leading to the cross, help us to remember how much you love us and the lens you would go to demonstrate that love for us. Let us wonder again at the forgiveness found in the cross. Help us to find healing and hope through the suffering of your Son on the cross. Amen.
Jesus, we pray.